Hi, I'm Chris and I hope you're doing well. And we're gonna be talking about the shoe of the moment, the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. But I'm gonna be looking at it slightly different to some other YouTubes that reviewed it. I'm a heel striker, have Achilles issues, and my main concerns when I saw this shoe was the lack of the heel. Also, the drop comes in at 4.5 millimeters from heel to toe, and also sizing was an issue. So I'm gonna get into that. I've taken the shoe on various runs, whether it be easy runs, I've taken on some 5Ks, and I've taken it over half marathon. I've only put 25 miles in the shoe, um, but I've wanted to keep this shoe uh, for best and to run the Brighton Marathon. I'll get it out there straight away. This shoe has been a game changer, and in this video, I'll get into to why that is. So out the box, um, as I, said, I was concerned about the sizing. So people have been saying that it's been coming up small, and that's mainly because it's got quite a narrow toe box at the end. I'm a UK 11 in the likes of Nike, Saucony, so I actually went for an 11 and a half, and it's fitted perfectly. On foot when you wear it for the first time, it's one of the strangest shoes that I've ever put on. You'll sit, your foot kind of sits slightly at an angle forward. And also when you're walking around the home, you can feel this big chunk of foam. And it, it's just such a weird feeling. You, it's hard to describe on camera, but when you're walking around, this is the kind of only bit that you can feel. And if you lean back, the shoe kind of rocks back. And if you stand kind of slightly forward, it kind of, as I say, it puts you at this kind of angle. So on the first run, you also notice this bit here up until you get up to pace or you kind of warm yourself up. Because I'm a bit older, it takes me about a quarter of a mile to get into my kind of swing of things. And you just feel this big chunk of energy, um, light foam. Uh, you've got two different compounds and obviously a, a carbon infused nylon plate in the middle. And it does feel a bit strange, not like anything I've used before. And for about the first, for myself, for the first mile, mile and a half, it just feels, you know, how am I going to get on with this shoe? But once maybe the foam warms up or you get used to it and you slowly pick up the pace from your very easy to kind of easy pace, the shoe seems to make more sense and it becomes more comfortable. Obviously, the faster you go, um, it comes alive, but we'll get into that in a minute. So the first time I run this, I was do, uh, agreed to do a sub 20 minute park run. So it was a two mile run down there. And as soon as I got down there, it was like my feet were a celebrity. Everyone was staring at these shoes. Everyone was coming up to me, you know, what are they? And take and wanted to take pictures. And everyone was impressed by the look of it. You know, from a uh, aesthetic point of view, it's, they're basically a work of art. And, you know, just looking at them, make you want to run fast and it's the same when you put them on so on the um the sub 20 park run um i normally you can run a 18 30 so i agreed to do that because it was a kind of pacing weekend and there was quite a few of us doing it i end up running um uh, i think about 19 35 and then went back and got someone else and coming in at, um 1959 the reason that we did that is because I was in a group of us, we were running bang on pace, a massive group, and we were slowly catching up some, some of the people that were dropping off the pace in front, and we all agreed that they wanted me to kind of push them a bit harder. So we had some people that hadn't gone sub 20 minutes in three years and ended up running a 1940. When I finished, um, I spoke to my friend Ben, who I see regularly there, and he said that I looked effortless when I was running. And to be honest, that's how I felt. I was seeing the people at the front and thought I could be up there with them because uh, it felt so easy. I felt that I was getting loads of kind of air and a massive stride. And this heel bit didn't seem to notice it, didn't seem to feel it. It just felt that the shoe was constantly keeping me in this area. And when you hit this kind of area here forward, the shoe is just so comfortable. It's not too soft, so it's a combination of bouncy and firm, but when you hit it in the right spot, it's just wonderful. I did look at the shoe when I got back, because I, when I transition, I transition from this outside edge into the inner toe, and there was 
a slight bit of dirt there. So obviously at times, maybe I do hit this area, but I've never noticed. But I did notice some wear on the inner edge, um, but not on the sole. So I think this is on our park run because it goes out and then you have to run around a cone, run back, another cone, run out, another cone, back. That when I turn, maybe I'm pushing on this area because there doesn't seem to be um, any wear on the inside edge. But obviously we'll find out that over time. Um, then after I did the year 5k, I would normally run home two miles, but I thought, oh, okay, I'll just go for a longer run home, just get some miles in. And I looked at my watch, I was running at 640 pace. So I decided to run another 5k. So I did a sub 20, run about 1940, and then did a 20, 30 um, on my second 5k, and then jogged home. And then next day, I thought to myself, I probably ain't gonna be able to do three miles because my legs are gonna be broken. And then went out in a different pair of shoes and ended up running a half marathon at a, a you know, reasonable pace and my legs felt quite fresh. And I think it comes down to this foam. I say this foam kind of saves your legs and that's why it's obviously down as a, a, you know, a marathon shoe. So my run today, I wanted to do a longer run in it. So we ended up doing a half marathon, which incorporated easy run to park run, uh, in the sub 21 group and then um, was planning 10 miles afterwards but my legs felt like trash yesterday um, at work I've not been drinking much so I was kind of thinking shall I bother today shall I not but I'd agree to it so my legs were pretty trash when I went down and without these shoes um, I think I would have struggled so again pacing the sub 21 group um, I was running my own for the first two miles no one was able to stick to the pace. I had someone about 40 seconds behind me. And then I noticed my friend, uh, Justin in front, he was starting to drift towards me. So I thought, you know, let's help him out. So I caught him up and then with about a K to go, I said, come, let's wind it up. So we started winding it up. And I said, when we get to this point, 100 to go, let's sprint. And he can sprint. I was kind of flat out. And this is where this shoe, even when I was sprinting, felt awesome, as I say, um, I wasn't sure if it'd be good at, you know, the kind of lower down distances, you know, the 5Ks, you know, 400 reps, 100 meter strides, sprints, whatever you want to call it, but it felt amazing. But when I looked at the de the kind of stats from my Endorphin Pro 2 to this shoe, exactly the same stride length running at, um, run about that sort of pace, 144 uh, with a turnover run about. I think 175 to 180. So the shoe doesn't make you have a longer stride length, doesn't turn your legs over more, but it saves your legs. And I think that's the most important bit. Um, on the long run, let's say no rubbing, no hot spots, good lockdown. The only thing I did do is use the extra eyelets to do the kind of lace lock in because I think with this, because your foot is constantly at that kind of forward angle, that if you are going downhill, there is a chance your foot might slide forward. So I just done the lace locking just to lock that ankle in place and that kind of worked well. On the run home, I uh, was planning to do 10, but I said my legs were beating up from the day before, so I ended up running eight. At a kind of easy-ish pace, at the kind of my easiest pace, it's okay. But once I get down to kind of nearer my medium pace, the shoe kind of comes alive because we're getting back into this area and it kind of propels you forward. And then obviously when you're at race pace, even more so. The only thing I, I have noticed on all the runs, that they say this is a four and a half mil drop. Don't know where they measure it from because obviously there is a massive difference between here and here. And I don't know where the, the four mil is, but it feels you know a lot higher than that takes all the pressure off my Achilles, takes all the pressure off my calf, and which is a relief for me because I've got Achilles you know, issues and I've had that for many years and I've got a burster on one side that was playing up the day before. So that's amazing. But obviously if it's taking the pressure off my Achilles and my calf, it has to put it somewhere else. So I think it puts it higher up on the uh, front of my thighs. Uh, cause now they do ache a bit, but that could have been just down to fatigue. It could have been because I was doing a flat out sprint or it could be the shoe. So I'd have to report back on that one when I know more. Um, it's not going to change my view on running the Bright Marathon in it because 
I need all the help I can get with obviously the lack of training recently and the lack of endurance. So for me, this shoe is a game changer. Um, it has kind of ruined it for other shoes because it is that good. And it's a shoe that if you're a heel striker, I haven't found any problems with it. Yes, I can see some slight wear on the inside edge and, and and a discolour in there so that mu I must have been hit in that area but I've not had any problems the drop hasn't been a problem but I don't know how true that is you know it is a legal shoe to race in although you know this is way over the legal limit but they measure from the back up to a certain point so still falls within the kind of legal limit do you think that's fair the way they've done it let me know down in the comments or have you got the shoe let me know how you've got on so anyway I'm gonna leave the video there Definitely a shoe that I would recommend from 5k to marathon and if I've got any races coming up for me I'd be I'm in an hour in over the 5k because I've got a fast 5k shoe that feels a bit poppier and a bit firmer but definitely from the 10k upwards this is a must shoe and if you can get your hands on it because I know it's sending out like hotcakes at the moment it's definitely worth a buy.